also a few words about the latest uh, developments in Ukraine um, and the reports coming through of um, war crimes in the town of Butcha outside Kiev. Um, of course, Russia's denying it. They're saying it's fake news. Um, but images don't lie. I mean, what's Russia proposing with this? Or rather, what's the Kremlin proposing? That these images of civilians with their hands tied behind their backs is somehow made up. So what are they proposing that is? I mean, if you say something's fake news, then it follows that um, the scene has to be set up. That these people are either not real people or they're actors or something. Um, I think the Kremlin has zero credibility. It's been lying from the start. And its lies have been plain to see for the world. Um, I'm, I'm disgusted by the images. And, you know, there, there's a number of things to look at with this. Um, President Biden has said that Putin's a war criminal. I think he's right. Um, because with the way the Russian system is ordered, particularly with the military, everything stops at Putin. With the way the structure is, everything comes back to Putin. Um, the morale in the Russian forces is absolutely appalling. Um, apparently hazing is a severe problem, I forget the Russian word for it, but there's been reports of Russian conscripts killing their own commanders. Um, now, when you have that sort of breakdown in structure, when you have that level of disillusionment, um, it's hardly surprising that uh, there will be rogue factions that are um, deliberately targeting civilians. And certainly with the presence of Chechens, uh, well, Kadyrov's Chechens to be more specific, um, they're not exactly going to listen to the, or to consider the Geneva Conventions. Um, I mean, the deaths of civilians in Ukraine, this isn't sort of collateral damage, which is a term I, I think is very inappropriate in a way, but this isn't like civilians are dying in crossfire or by accident. I think there's very strong evidence that Russian forces are deliberately targeting Ukrainian civilians. Um, there were reports in the Battle of Mariupol that civilians were actually being um, sent to Russia which kind of has hallmarks of the Stalinist deportation programs of the 30s and 40s. Um, I think Putin is a war criminal, and I think that uh, Russia's committing war crimes. No question about it. Um, I mean, if they are going to say that this is all fake, let them prove it. Let them prove it. Um, I think the the restraint the Ukrainians are showing is is remarkable. There were some reports of Ukrainian troops abusing POWs, um, shooting them in the legs and so on. I suppose it's possible, um, but you know, contrast the Ukrainian response to the Russian response. Ukraine has said it takes that seriously and it would investigate that, um, and it doesn't tolerate that sort of behaviour by its troops. Contrast that with the Kremlin, which um, just lies after lies after lies. Um, and I think basically Russia wants to subjugate Ukraine. I mean, this is a country that has been degraded by Russia going way back to the Holodomor in the 30s. Um, so if there are anti-Russian sentiments in Ukraine, it's hardly any surprise. I mean, this is a country that has been um, subjugated by its much larger neighbour for decades. Um, the Holodomor in the 30s and now uh, full-scale invasion combined with uh, clear crimes against humanity. I mean, all wars are brutal. Uh, this one's turning out to be particularly brutal. Um... I think the death of every Russian soldier is on Putin's hands. I think the death of every Ukrainian civilian and soldier is on Putin's hands. Um, I have no problem saying I think this man is evil. Particularly for Ukraine, but also for his catalogue 
of crimes against humanity um, over the past 20 years. Uh, his propping up of the Assad regime in Syria, his targeting of dissidents in Russia, his brutal treatment of dissidents in Russia, um, the steady slide away of human rights in Russia, um, the way his regime has targeted opposition figures from Alexei Navalny, um, Alexander Litvinenko and others, the appalling track record of press freedom in Russia. Um, this man is a threat to world peace. I'm talking about Putin. And um, I don't know how anyone can look at those images and defend Russia's actions unless they're either thoroughly ignorant, a Russian nationalist, or um, simply in denial of what they're seeing. Um, there isn't really much more to say. Uh, I, I think that Putin should face war, a war crimes tribunal, but it's highly unlikely to ever happen, unfortunately. Um, of course, there is a possibility that he could fall from an internal coup. I hope that happens. I really do. I'm not saying I want to see a Russian civil war. That wouldn't help anyone. But an internal coup by perhaps generals or um, FSB people, not necessarily dissidents, but people who were in Putin's inner circle and who have no, no fallen out, that might be a possibility. But I honestly think Putin is a threat to world peace. Um, and I think this man has caused enormous suffering to humanity. Anyway, there really isn't much more to say, but, you know, the Ukrainians have treated POWs very well up to now. They've let these young conscripts call their families back home. They've generally treated them well. Um, the problem is, the longer this goes on, understandably, the Ukrainians are going to feel more and more resentful as they see their, their wives, their daughters, their brothers, their sisters, their fathers um, slaughtered indiscriminately. It would be very strange if they didn't feel rage towards Russia. Um, I think there's another risk with this in that it, it's going to kind of drift into the background. People are going to, you know, it's human nature. People will get fatigue of hearing about Ukraine. And that is a big problem because it's very important what's happening there. You know, um, with the invasion, that was a huge story, and Ukraine was the major world story for, for about a month. But there is a risk that people will get tired of hearing about it, and then it will just drift off into the background and just become another war. And I don't think it should. Perhaps Putin's banking on that. So um, when I see what's happening, I think it all the more vindicates taking a voice away from Russian state media and their lies. Um, you know, I think this all the more vindicates RT losing its license because RT spread lies in favour of Putin and the Kremlin. If RT was still broadcasting here, what they would be doing is going out of their way to spin conspiracy theories that the Ukrainians staged this or the CIA staged it. Or some other such baseless nonsense. Um, and it's sickening. Because I think Russian hawks care only, only about um, Russian irredentism. Of course Putin's ahead of that, but there's, you know, there's others in Russia who staunchly support him. Uh, Margarita Simonian of RT is one example. Uh, his inner circle, of course, Sergei Lavrov. Uh, so yes, Putin is the top of the pyramid, but there are others. Anyway, um, quick word incident. I wasn't going to mention this, but I may as well. Tonight I've watched the film uh, Heaven and Earth, 1993 film with Tommy Lee Jones. Um, it's the third part in the Vietnam War trilogy by Oliver Stone. It's a very powerful film, and it's about and it features, you know, some brutality that went on in that war. It shows South Vietnamese um, personnel torturing some peasant girls. Um, and then the Viet Cong rapes one of them. She's the main character. Um, 
and you know uh, Stone, you know, portrays that very powerfully. Yet today, Stone is one of the West's leading Putin apologists. So I think that's a kind of tragic irony. That this is a man who has made films uh, really covering human suffering and and particularly around the end of China wars, and yet he has gone out of his way to spin Putin's narrative. And I think at some point Oliver Stone, I wasn't going to make this video about Oliver Stone, but I'll just mention this briefly. Um, at some point he's allowed his, perhaps his bitterness over his experience in Vietnam, to cloud his judgment about the West. And in doing so, I think he's been blinded by the sort of pro-Russian bias. I remember Stone um, interviewed Putin and he was visibly, you know, inspired by Putin and moved by Zora of power. And I think Stone has allowed himself to get blinded by that. He'll probably deny it, but his his rhetoric, his narrative, his public statements over recent years have been troubling to say the least. And it's a great pity because I think he's a very talented filmmaker. He's had a very interesting life. I just think he's dead wrong when it comes to Russia. And it's a great pity because he could use his intelligence uh, to be a real voice against um, what Putin is doing in the world. And that's unfortunately not something that he's doing. Okay, I'll round it up there. But, you know, every dead Ukrainian um, is a shadow over Putin's legacy.